agenda tonight. Harlan, you do. At some point, I got some questions about the erosion specialist. Erosion specialist. Anybody else? Nope. Well, then I'll, um, we've been properly warned, posted at three places on the website, and emailed to interested parties so we can move forward. And we're going to start with the minutes from last meeting on November 12th. And I didn't have any corrections to those. Do you guys? So I move to accept those as uh, presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. There you go, Dora. Thank you. That rings the bell. <laughs> um, good. And, <clears throat> well, I guess, Harlan, what do you, do you have some questions about the erosion specialist? Are you talking about the presentation for the the um, stormwater runoff last meeting, or, or what are you talking about? I'm talking about the uh, erosion specialist that was hired in the bingo situation. Erosion specialist. I don't know if he was an erosion specialist, but he was, uh, um, Well, that's how you referred to him in the last meeting, so that's... Erosion specialist. Well, you have a question about him? Yeah. Who's paying for that? Oh, it's, it's up here. Specialist. That's the expert, yeah, expert witness. Actually, he's an expert witness. Um, we are not paying for that. Who is? The, um, the Marty and Christian. Christian. Okay. Yeah. Who's, who is this erosion specialist? That's what he is. I'm not sure if that's his proper title there. He's an expert witness well, on. A company or. Uh, I don't know the answer right? to that. No, he's not an attorney. Not an attorney. He's, he's a he's a surveyor, and he's a he's, he's been hired as an expert witness to present um, information about the road. Yeah. And this is about the road, excuse me. Yes. Uh, Pine Pine Gap, Gap Road. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You don't know this guy's name. Or I haven't. Um, I could find it. We have. We have. Could you? Could you I'm just wondering if it's a company or if it's somebody that, you know, works for Casella Waste Management or, you know, i just like to know some skinny on it, that's all. You, um, all right, you can, um... Did they ever work for Casella's? I don't know that. You know, well, these are few things I'd like to know. And I think, you know, everybody should. And, you, you and, have the, the, and the report... Information. For Charles Merriam, right? What's that? You do have the contact information for Charles Merriam, right? Well, I'm asking you as no. a taxpayer. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. All right. I'm just saying that would be a very direct way for you to go for someone that would probably be able to answer those questions for you real quickly. Yeah. I can wait a couple weeks yeah. till the next meeting. Yeah. I'm not that much of a yank. So you want to know his name? Yeah, I'd like to if know if it's a company or if it's an individual that does this. I mean, are they affiliated with Casella's? You know, just basic information. And I also would like to know if the report or anything this guy comes up with is going to be made public. Probably in court. Yeah, probably in court. So that'll be yeah. part of the. I mean, the of course, the town is going to get a copy of his. Deductions or conclusions? Deductions or conclusions? Well, I, I think what he was hired to do is basically as the, all the information is compiled, he's the one that's actually you know, presented. Right. Okay. I don't think he's making up a lot on his own that I know about. He's going to present the information as an expert witness. That's okay. as much as I know. At the trial? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I still like to know who this guy is, and uh, you know if he's ever done any work with Casella before, or, you know those kind of things. All right. Thank you. Sure. Um, excuse me. I just want to make sure I'm getting this worded correctly.
directly for the paper. So when all the information is compiled, he will present it at the trial, but I'm, I'm not remembering okay, in exactly. Court. In court. Okay, in court. But we don't know when that's going to be. <coughs> in court at some time in the future. court. Excuse me? If, if it even gets to court. If, okay. It could be, the information could be presented to a judge and a request for a summary judgment. If the judge feels that it's easy enough to make a decision from the information that's presented to him, then that could be the end of it there. Okay, so he'll present it in court if the judge feels that it need, that needs to happen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I guess. Say that. Okay. So, moving right on, along to other complicated things. Joan, it's your turn. Uh, yeah, I just have a uh, little bit of information. Um, I completed, I think, today uh, the compilation of all the costs for the North Hollow Road uh, project, which was a grant. Um, and I had to add up all the equipment use costs, the town labor, the materials, which is primarily gravel, but also um, a few other things, and a portion of the paving contract that covered a variety of different projects, but, and part of it, just part of it was North Hollow Road. Um, and so my best estimate at the moment still needs a little bit of fact checking for the total project cost for the North Hollow project was $158,906. Um, and the grant budget that we submitted uh, about two years ago was for a total cost of 175,000. So we more or less come in under under that budget. Um, the grant amount is 80% of that, or 140,000. So uh, with that uh, total cost of 158,9, that means the town share of that project is $31,781, and uh, the balance will be re reimbursed by the grant the amount of $127,124. And the town charge portion can that be done um, in kind, in, in housework? Well, what was done was a combination of town labor and equipment use and purchase of materials. Good. Um, I thought you said, I'm sorry, did I misunderstand? I thought you said the amount is 80% or 140000 that's not what no, we're going to get back? No, the original grant budget was... Um, 175. No, the total cost was estimated at 175, and 80% oh, okay. of that is what the grant funds, which made it $140,000. Um, but if the cost is less than the original budgeted amount, then the town still pays 20% of whatever that total cost is. So that's how we get the, to the $31,000 and change. But we should get 140 back. No, 127,124 in 80 cents. Okay, so, excuse me, I just want to make sure this is right. So you estimate the total cost would be 158,906, and the grant will pay for 140,000 of that amount? No. Okay. No. Okay. The total project cost, the actual cost, is 158,906. Okay. That's versus the estimated amount in the budget, which we submitted back in whatever it was two years ago, was 175000 okay. So we actually spent only 158906 Okay, and so how much will the grant pay then? 127124 which is 80% of the actual cost. Okay, 124 thank you very much. Yeah. I just want to make sure I get it correct. And um, I would love to have some expert opinion take a look at someone who knows about paving costs, take a look at... Um, the quote we received and then the actual cost. Um, this is not something I'm experienced with and it just uh, was a rather complicated process since it included so many different sites getting paving. Um, and what I realized today was that the quote uh, was $20,000 less than what the ultimate bill was. Um, and I don't know if that's just typical for paving projects like this or if it's something that we should be looking into for any reason. Just even if it's just for, you know, what we do next time. It's possibly contract. from the, the, the add-ons that we did, some of it. I mean, I'm sure a bit is just a, you know, 
bit, but the um, when we decided to finish the top of Quarry Road, and but I get yeah, you're right. We should have some. Well, I think it's all in there. What? Yeah. But I wasn't a part of the whole bidding process, so I, yeah. I can't say for sure. So I just yeah. I just want another pair of eyes to look at and say, no, yeah, idea. it looks fine. Yeah. You know, this is what we expected, and that twenty thousand dollar cost differential <coughs> is what we might expect to happen. Because I, I just don't know. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Hey, Dad. Hi, John. How are you? All right. So, um, anything else? Well, uh, the other thing is just um, two letters that have been requested of the town by folks that are involved with the the trails projects, Rasta, um, Ron Grant. This is something that comes through to us through Angus McCusker. Um, there's one grant that has been will be applied for by Rasta directly. Uh, the application was due January 1st, and uh, they have to raise a 20% match. They uh, asked us if we might want the town might be willing to contribute to that match, and we said no to that. Um, we've got too many other ob financial obligations at the moment, but that we would be willing to uh, submit a letter of support for that. Um, so that one uh, needs to go to Angus, and then there's another grant that the town of Randolph is applying for. It's a BOREC grant, which stands for Vermont Outdoor Recreation Communities, <coughs> which is a program under the uh, Vermont Department of Forest, Parks, and Recreation. And both of them are more or less, you know, supporting the same effort, which is uh, trail development that connects various communities in this area. Randolph to Rochester to Hancock and possibly Granville. And they they have asked us if we would be willing to write a letter of support for Randolph's application. Um, and that one is due before December 15th. So I could either draft some letters, Dune, for you to sign, or Dune, if you want to just send the letters directly, I can tell you who they should be addressed to and who they should go to. Um, excuse me, Joan, the trail project in Randolph, what's the name of the organization or is it the town? Or? Uh, it's the town that's making the application with assistance from Rasta. Okay. And it's focused on a single track trail connectivity from Randolph to Rochester, as well as access to the Cushman State Forest along okay. the bridge. Thank you. So, I think that's a good idea. Are you guys oh, okay with having the town write a letter of support? For sure. Pitch it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is going to be going after yes. yeah. another phase into Randall. Yeah. So you can put, put together a uh, you want me to do letter we'll letters to both yeah. for, for the Okay. And the so is that places. something, I guess it probably wouldn't hurt if we just had it here and all, all three of us signed it. You know, that way it'd be... Martha? Excuse me, the, the first roster project for the first letter, that's on this side of the mountain? Yes. Let's see, Rasta is planning to apply for a recreation trails program grant towards the Peavine Trail. Thank you. As well as uh, a, the down section of Old Gents Trail, which I think is somewhere near the ranger station. Yeah, it's above the ranger station. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. uh, right. I'll get a letter out on Wednesday and then just let you okay. know it's here for signing. All right, great. Okay. Thank you. That's all? All right, that's enough. So you folks came in uh, a little late to add to the agenda, but we'll um, let you do it anyway. So what, um, what would you like to, or did you just come here to, to witness the democracy in action? Well, Vermont has very impressive democracy from yeah. what I understand. Yeah, right. so, uh, we're here about a situation in the North Hollow regarding mm -hmm. Mike, Mike Shepard's dogs which I believe you should have gotten an email on from Joanne. Mm -hmm. We want to know what the town's going to do about it. Uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm Rich Allen. This is my wife, Sandy. I'm Ed Robichaud. Yep. We've uh, owned our house for 27 years on uh, Mountain View Loop. Mm -hmm. We've been part-timers until two years ago. And we never realized how incredibly bad the situation is with Mike Shepard. I don't know how up to speed you guys are on this, but he owns eight beagles that are kept outside almost all the time. And they bark constantly. 
We've complained on several occasions. Ed's complained on several occasions. And what's Bruce and Carol's? I don't know their last name. No. no. Yeah. yeah, they've complained. And apparently, I, I don't know what's being done about it, but these dogs bark constantly. And we know, we're aware that there's an ordinance in town about regarding dogs. Uh, and I understand from what I've heard that there's a fine associated with that. And we don't understand why the town isn't more aggressively trying to do something about the inconvenience, to put it mildly, that these dogs cause in the neighborhood. Patty, you live right across the street. I'm in the neighborhood. I'm not, I do not live across the street from Mike Shepard. No, but you're on. I'm in the neighborhood, but I'm not a neighbor. Okay. So, Mark, I understand you you spoke with Mike. Well, I spoke to his wife actually uh, one a while a bit ago, um, and they were working on some ideas of, of causing, of trying to control the park. How long ago so, was, was that? Uh, it's got to be a month ago, probably. It was, was at least two months ago because it, it was been, before yeah. we left. For, we spent half the year in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. It was before we left. And I'm just going to tell you what happens, because I've seen this all the time. Ed, you can jump in whenever you want. Yeah. Whenever people complain, the last time it was the dog warden was in Bethel that talked to him. Mm -hmm. It gets, it quiets down for about a month, and then it goes right back to the way it was. He has those dogs outside chained up in just about all kinds of weather. So whenever anyone walks by, in fact, I take it if you want to hear it. Oh, I've, I got out of my car today, coming back from Home Depot at 2 o'clock, and the second my door opened, those three of them started, I'm guessing, it yeah. wasn't all of them, but three of them. And they barked for 10 solid minutes. Because mm -hmm. I went in the house and I timed it. I, I had taped them for about a half a minute. Just I sat in down case. to lunch around 1 o'clock, and I was reading, and the whole time I was reading there for a half an hour, those dogs were barking. I don't know what got them going. Last night at 8 or 8.30, I was sitting in the den. It's completely closed up, and I could hear the dogs barking at 8.30 at night. You know, I think one of the things that Loretta and I are concerned about is what kind of humane treatment are these dogs receiving, particularly when it gets cold. Because I hear them barking on the cold times. Oh, they're out all, they're out yeah. until it's, until it was 20 degrees, those dogs were out in this, in this cold snap. So I'm number one surprised the town would allow that to happen. But frankly, at this point, I just want the dogs quiet. I, I worked 50 years to retire up here. I love Rochester. And I didn't retire to listen to those dogs all the time. And now that we've li lived here for two years, you can smile, but it's not no, funny. I'm, I'm, and I have to give Joanne a lot of thanks. You've taken the initiative. You've got, you got Mark to go up. And you've sent the email out about tonight. So we do appreciate that. The town's got to enforce the ordinance, as as I understand it exists. And I haven't read it, but I've been told that there is an ordinance, and it allows for fining so much a dog. And I don't understand why that hasn't happened yet. So Mark, you're shaking your head. Now, the way the ordinance reads, the only way we have fines in place is if the animal's impounded. So, I mean, I reviewed this ordinance again last night in preparation. And the way I understand the ordinance is the only way, way we have fines in place is if they're impounded. And, and they can be impounded if they're in violation of the ordinance I, three times, I believe it was. Um, so for us to impound dogs, we don't have a place to impound anything. Um, so I think we have to modify. So what is, um, in terms of the ordinance, what, um, well, it says there, it, it barking is a nuisance. It is, a, it is a violation, but there's no fine associated with it. Uh, it says, well, it's section four, uh, part B here, disturbance and nuisances. No person shall own, keep, or harbor a dog or hybrid that dis disrupts the quiet, comfort, and response of others by frequent, habitual, or persistent barking or howling. So that's the, the, the barking part of it. But like I said, there's no fines associated with it. It's just that's the ordinance. Um, so there's an ordinance without remedy? Is that what we're talking about here? That's right. Basically, it says they can be impounded after three violations. Let me see if I find that section here. So 
basically the impound means it's a dog's pot loose running around. Yeah, that's what I thought it was loose, but it right. it's, it's, um, I guess why nothing has happened, because it's, it's, it's not easy. You know, I mean, we can't just say, hey, you, yes, he's, his dogs are breaking the ordinance of, of just dis disturbing. There's no question about that. Um, I've, I've experienced it. I walk up there. Mm -hmm. And Mark visited uh, the Shepherd home on uh, August 18th. Right. Okay, and I was up there again the other day okay. as well. And of course, when I was there, nothing was all peaceful. And I actually drove by the house, but there was one you dog out there at that point. Say something? Yes. Um, I was, I have a lot of health issues, and I was actually at Dartmouth. Hitchcock that I go to, but I was in there for a while, and get, and I'm released, and I come home, of course, and that is so tedious when somebody doesn't feel well. No, I'm sure. Or is sick, and to hear that, I'm a dog lover. I love animals so much. Every now and then, you don't care about it. I've had them run away from him and come up on our deck. And if I could have kept them, I would have. He's very abusive to the dogs. And you hear he them screaming. Understand. And that in itself, I've been here for so long. And to tell you the truth, I always worried about how the dogs were being taken care of and the thought of them being impounded and put down. But you know what? This year, I decided that if those dogs were put down, that would be better for the dogs. And I can't imagine ever saying something like that, but I feel for them. And this weather is too cold for beagles to be out. It's not, it's not it's right. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised because I feel like Vermont is a state that really cares about their animals and they look out for them. And nobody's looking out for these poor dogs. They're loving, either when they run loose, they just want somebody to pet them and hold them. They jump right up on your lap. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, an it's overall sad. a very bad situation. And our kids. But at this point, all we want is the dogs to be quiet. I don't care what, I told you yeah. this the other day, yeah. I don't care what happens. I just want, I want peace and quiet in my retirement home. Yeah. And I'm entitled to that. Right. And the town yeah, needs I, to do I something. You guys need yeah. to figure yeah. something out on this because I, this is unacceptable. With the way I'm reading this, I believe that the penalties are the first offense, second offense, third offense is impoundment and impoundment costs plus $200 full penalty, 150 pound waiver. So I, I don't. That's my understanding. I thought <coughs> there, was a, there was a fine for breaking the peace in this ordinance. As it was explained, that's, to that's the way I read it. Yep. Yeah. I don't believe that we're the only ones. I think oh, we're the only ones yeah. who yeah. showed up yeah. here. Right. Because they're afraid of Mark. Yeah, Shepherd. people are afraid of Shepard. Mm -hmm. He threatened. Ridiculous. He threatened uh, Neil Krantz. He threatened to kill Neil Krantz when Neil's dog got loose and ran into his beagles, ran into the pen where the beagles were. Six months later, Neil moved. Neil told me this himself. This guy is scary, but we, I'll tell you, we're not, he's not scaring us. We want something done about this. And I think that's not unreasonable for us to want this when you hear those dogs barking over and over again continuously. I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask. Um, how far away physically are you from the dogs? Well, I would say 300, 300 feet maybe. You? Double that. Certainly, the impact to them is different, but okay. It's, but you're it's right. Almost right. like an amphitheater, yeah, right? Anything that it's a hollow. We're in the hollow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there, do these dogs bark uh, during the night as well? No, and that's. An, I'm glad you brought that up. On the weekends when they're home, those dogs bark less than half as much. It's during the week when they're at work. They put yeah. them outside, yeah. chain yeah. them up. That's not unusual. You know, and then the dogs just bark and bark. And I don't know what they did after the constable visited them in the summer, but the barking diminished dramatically. And I said to Ed, I know what's going to happen. Give it a month and a half, they're going to be back out. That's about what it was. 
I leave for work at quarter or six in the morning. They're barking most mornings when I, right. as soon as I open the door, I hear them barking. Does, does um, have any of you spoken to this man personally? No. Not None since the last time. Tell him about last, last time. time. I spoke with him in 1990. Oh, that's a long time ago. A long time ago. Okay. My wife could hear his four-letter diatribe against me down at our house. What did you speak about, if I may ask? <laughs> about dog. his dogs at that time. <laughs> And I'm not particularly unreasonable. I don't think I attacked him. I just said, you know, we need to come to some sort of a range here where yeah. these dogs aren't barking. So this has been going on really for decades. I've had three interactions with them in 27 years, and all three have been very negative. Once was when I walked through the right of way for the water. I was coming down from the upper road, and there's that easement. He came out of his house, and like you said, I mean, just screaming at me, telling me to get off his, I said, I'm not on your land. And I'm, I'm just walking out of my house. And he was screaming and yelling, and then two other times over the last two decades. It's been similar. So I have no desire to talk to this guy. Okay. That's his job, to take care of this, not mine. It's the town's job to enforce the ordinance. That's my position. And we're beseeching you to do that. So Mark, what do you see as the next step here? You talked to him at least twice, I think? Well, I think so. I talked to his wife. So I would, I would recommend that the select board draft up a letter. And basically, they can probably have him, um, if he doesn't comply, I think they can have him remove the dog. We can remove the dog, probably. Um, I'd have to check with your town lawyer on that a little bit more, but or, or leave some cities and towns more. So, but I think if uh, it's an ongoing event, We've been, I've been up there at least twice, if not more, as far as to talk with somebody. Um, so, I, I mean, well, I guess the fine issue is does, uh, by interpretation, I suppose. Um, so, technically, how many times have you, has this gentleman been warned? Once or twice? I've been up there twice and talked to him. Um, this year? Over this, this year, year. This year, right. Okay. Um, prior to that, I don't recall. But. So, third strike? But that's that's where the town would say, all right, if you, if you can't, if you're in violation, then you could take the dogs. And then what? <laughs> and then I think that would be a gray area there. Gray area? Because frankly, we have no place to, if we even took the dogs, what would you do with them? It's good to see well, yeah. With the so state and the PCA, yeah. you have yeah, to have well. There's got to be plenty of places. Do we buy into the... Um, yeah, they, will, they only take strays. Well, those things shouldn't stop us from doing the right thing. Well, no, no, I, I agree. Yeah, right. Just saying, this is where the interpretation of my interpretation of it, of the way that the thing is written, the yeah. ordinance is written. Um, and the problem also that I have is dogs are barking, okay? They're going to bark when I drive up there anyway, if they're there. Most dog, any dog will bark if you pull them in their yard. So part of the issue is the parking issue determination, I guess. All right, well, let me. It's move. not a question about it being a problem. I mean, it's obvious well, that it's right, exactly, exactly it's a right, problem. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So they I should really not be able to have dogs the way yeah, that that's that. not the issue here. The issue I know. is the barking. Okay. I, know. I mean, that is, as far as we're concerned, we all believe that. Yeah. I mean, in years past, I've seen him hit the dogs. Mm -hmm. And his other neighbor on the other side told me during the summer that he's seen him do it too. So I mean, from a humane standpoint, there are issues. It's All we want is quiet. There are collars you can put on dogs, there are muzzles you can put on dogs. He could, he could do 20 different things if he wants to because I know he does it. Because on weekends, the dogs are much quieter when they're there. So, Although when they do bark, the way it's generally dealt with is somebody sticking their head out the door and shrieking at them to Bar shut up. Right. Yeah, and they shut up for 10 minutes and, and then the next person walks for 10 by. minutes. And right. But that's not the answer. So they did try the bark collars for a while, but uh, my, from talking to her, she said they were, kept, they were getting burned. So that was not something they could do anymore. Because it was burning them. So. And also the issue is, with them, 
probably the best thing is to relocate them somewhere. They are hunting dogs, so they need to bark when they're hunting. So if they train them not to bark at all, then that depletes the purpose of the dog too. So, but I mean, this is a residential area, and that's shouldn't be done. That shouldn't be an issue here. The issue is they should be quiet. Period. Well, and can you do anything about them, the fact that they're left outside in the cold? It's a very great, there's a lot of leeway on that. They got oh. cut, they've got shelter and they've got the proper doors on their, <coughs> their housing if it's uh, got some sort of bedding in it. Um, been around around with us with another issue in another town, so. Um, I haven't searched his animals for that purpose because I haven't had an issue that I've been aware of with that, so. That's a whole different ballgame. Do, do we all know and agree that there are eight dogs there? I believe I have encountered them, but I've been told there are eight. In fact, Joanne, you mentioned that Diane said to you, I don't understand why he needs eight dogs, right? She said, okay. I can't convince him that he doesn't need eight hunting dogs. Right. I think he's currently got them split, some on the east side of the house, some on the west. And that no, this weekend they were all on, the, yeah. on our side, the east side. I wasn't around, so. Yeah. My son was here with his wife and his baby, and they woke up every morning because of the dog, because they're on that side of the house yeah. where the guest bedroom is. Well, I think it's definitely a project. And we'll, um, about it. we'll persevere and, and um, well, I have a question. Yeah. Joanne says your interpretation is that we can find it. That's the way you read it. Can, can I get a copy of that before we leave, and please? I, and with that, I'd like to see if we can put this on the website if possible. Because yeah. I know people ask for it all the time. Is that possible to put this on the website? I think so. I was trying to get it, make sure I didn't have the copy of one on the website. And I don't know, I guess that's mine. <laughs> uh, um, excuse me? Yeah. I just want to make sure I have this correct too, because I got somewhat confused yeah, about what you're finding. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, very funny. No, what I meant was there's apparently no oh, okay. fine associated with our town ordinance about persistent barking, but there is a provision um, for a fine and impounding dogs that are treated inhumanely. Is that correct? Or? But it's section 10 reads in this ordinance as penalties and costs. That's just section 10, but it doesn't say what those penalties are for. So I'm on, my impression is that that's for, for the impoundment. Okay, so there's... Nine, but I guess it's an interpretation. So yeah, if I said there's a provision for impounding dogs that are treated inhumanely and left out to find it, that's correct. Exactly don't what we should do. Exactly okay, all right, thank you. Because I ran, I ran across the same issue in Bethel, actually, and their ordinance is written just a little bit differently. Basically says any violation of this ordinance is subject to fines of this nature. So it might be a matter of having that wording change. Right. Yeah. That's what I would. Can it can it be looked at from a different direction instead of uh, an animal direction? Is there a disturbing the peace direction? No. Because it's not after ten o'clock at nope, night. Exactly. Yeah. It's not a noise in the night. No. And that's so big. I have one. Okay. <laughs> well, um, sorry that you're having to deal with this and uh, we'll work on it. Okay. Yeah. That's the best we can do. Can you do up the letter and yeah. send it and give him the deadline? I mean, if you, if you can get that two times a year and to see him. So we can put the, those dates in the letter. <coughs> uh, just up there the other day, uh, I didn't talk to him, but I drove by the other day. So, yeah. but the last time was probably, I guess maybe it was August. Did you find anything? Then I spoke with somebody up there. I think that's a great idea to do for the interim, mm -hmm. is to put them on notice formally. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, um, because I'm quiet around your place is important. Yeah, that's for sure. Oh, I agree. I couldn't handle that myself. But the chief probably feels they're never going to take action. I know. This has been going on for years. I know. I know. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much for hearing us out. Well, it's nothing, it's something like this 
that causes ordinances to be looked at again. Mm -hmm. And you're to be thanked for bringing it in uh, as a problem. Um, that's how they get updated. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep, exactly. It has been going on for a very long time. Yeah. 92 is when we moved Earlier. in to the house. We've got the house. Okay. Yep, we all set. Okay, thank well, you. thank you again. Thank you. Thanks. We may be back next month. All right. See you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just two weeks. Is that even a whole Well, Mark, I'm glad you were here to help um, shed a little bit of light on there that we could. Do you have um, more that you want to talk about tonight? Oh, we got to do actually not to do with the animals because. Yeah. Seems like I get phone calls all the time about animals <laughs> from all around. Um, I'm just curious about the old firehouse. We talked about that a little bit, I think, doing. I think I talked to you about that a while ago regarding the doors, if anything's going to be done with those, because one doesn't even shut tight or open. Um, that's one of the reasons the trailer wasn't put in there. It is now, but after a little damage to property that had to be replaced. Um, as you may or may not be aware, a lock was cut so they could move it. I didn't think it was that pending to move it that quickly because it would have got moved as soon as I was back in the area. But anyway, the lock had to be replaced. But there was snow. Yeah, now it's gone. But I've had cars parked here for weeks and then... <laughs> but anyway, regardless, um, the lock had to be replaced. My phone works. I get a call all the time with dogs on me from whoever. Um, so anyway, my bottom line is I'm wondering what we're doing with the doors. Um, the, the one door doesn't even shut tight, and it's not secure at first. I mean, not that anybody's going to bother it, but... You're right, it's not that it's... Um, I know dude, what we got in there, some... that trailer and some snow plow equipment. No, the snow plow equipment are gone. You have tables, uh, yeah. benches and stuff in there. Yeah. There's radar trailers. There's two of those in there, and I, I haven't got a chance to talk to you. It was on the spur of the moment, but the Cramble trailer's in right now. And if you don't want it there, that's fine, but my understanding was everything that was going in there was in there, so the space was available. Um, we can talk about that some more. If we need to move it, it'll get moved, but... Uh, Maybe Granville will pay to fix it. Well, i got to pay for it. Uh, I've got to pay for it. I couldn't put it in the barn somewhere, I guess is what it gets down to. But I had it at my house last year, and uh, out in the snow did not work well for it, so... So what was the answer? I didn't quite get that. The, um, there was no answer yet. Oh, okay. Right. No. So I'm hoping that maybe something's under the doors before winter. Um, like I said, one door doesn't even open, and it's not closed well, all the way. The overhead doors. Yeah, you're talking about the overhead. So and the, the lock, the key, And then the, uh, it's a battery-operated lock on the, the main pedestrian door. Is that correct, Terry? Oh, wait a minute. I think it's just a push button. Just push yeah, I don't even know if that even well, opens. It's quite old. I don't yeah, even think it opens right now. <laughs> that is old, is it? <laughs> Wasn't when I left. Mm -hmm. I haven't been in there since. Do you remember Lucky the conversation? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> well, it hasn't. It definitely hasn't been a priority. Oh, well, I understand that, but the doors now that we got there. some equipment in there and uh, yeah. stuff that. Probably nobody would bother, but do we want a chance to? I don't, I mean. I'd just put a hasp on it and put a paddle lock on it and call right, it victory. Probably, right. Yeah, that wouldn't take a whole lot. Yeah. No, exactly. No, I, that's, that's you know, I agree, I understand. Yeah. I just yeah. open something. Because right now, the only way to get in is to do the one overhead door, and there's, of course, no handles enough on that. In fact, I put it up the other day, and I couldn't get it back down because it went up all the way, and there's no rope. There is a rope on it now, by the way. <laughs> so yeah. I could get it back down. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. That's, I guess that's all I have for right now. Um, we did not, I think I mentioned this already, you have a grant for highway safety anymore. Uh, we did not get a grant for this next year. So no extra money, no extra hours. Um, with that, I don't expect Randy to be working much. He doesn't now, so mm -hmm. he was doing so a lot. So was that from that we just didn't get it or we didn't fill it out? We didn't get it. We didn't get it, okay. And with that, if we don't get a uh, DOI or, or OP grant, 
we don't are not eligible for uh, equipment grant. So they all combine them now. So, so the highway safety campaigns that we used to participate in, we won't be because we used to do generate funds per campaign right. for equipment. So, but now you don't not, don't qualify. They changed the way the system. So. so we didn't meet the qualifications for the grant. Or we well, that's the we yes and no. Uh, part of the problem I run into is a one man department, for say. Or, you know, Randy was working with someone who did some checkpoints occasionally. Um, checkpoints is the problem, they want to see checkpoints and mm -hmm. do a checkpoint and need a minimum of three people. Mm -hmm. So, but that necessarily wasn't why they didn't give us a grant again, they just they're revamping how they're doing things. So they think they could better justify it. A lot of other towns our size that also didn't get Yeah, paid. all the towns, that, I shouldn't say all the towns, Bethel, same deal with Bethel. I applied. They I got a grant for you, see, we didn't get one again either. Okay. So, okay. Um, yeah, it's done the same way I've done it the previous years, and it's mm -hmm. just they decided that they spend their money better if somewhere else. Okay. So, this time around. Right. In fact, I'm, I've got the grant money for equipment money coming from for Bethel for the last year's campaign, but because I didn't get a U, uh, DUI grant for the Bethel, they don't know how they're going to pay it to us now. <laughs> okay. so, so, so anyway, so, so no grant there. Um, I've been doing a few extra hours because I know, like I said, Randy hasn't been um, occasionally, uh, not every week, but uh, we're still within plenty of budget, so I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Mark, are you going to be coming tomorrow night? <laughs> Is that tomorrow night? It's budget season. Yes, yes, it's, it's on my schedule. Night. Yes, it's, it's on my schedule. Yeah. 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 And Terry? Yeah. At five, I'm out of here at quarter five. six. You can be out of here at quarter six. Because we got to critique that fire. <coughs> six for you, Mark. Right, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Why we were you know, first thing in the morning. Well, thank you for coming in tonight. We've been missing you. Right. Uh, some been the trouble is, I got all my meetings are all the same night. It's tough to get to all of them. But, and I, you know, obviously, if I got a phone that works, whenever if you got an issue, call me or email us occasionally. Sometimes the way you hold me, my cell phone, I'm for sure. If you don't all have it, you should have it. It's usually how everybody gets to call me. Bethel broadcasted all over their website, so. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, we could go look for it. Yep. All right, good. Thank you. So I presume the highway guys aren't here because they're out on the roads right now. But Terry, you're in. What's new in the uh, utility world? Everything seems to be working fine. That's what I was hoping you were going to say. <laughs> for a change. Yeah. What's that? We sold it. Thank God. <laughs> it went before winter. Amazing. Uh, one thing we did, you know, we had fire on Thanksgiving night, and up in Grandma they had an issue that they couldn't get a hold of anybody to come put some sand down. So my, I talked to Cooter today for a little bit about it. Is there any way, if we had that situation again, that we could call Cooter? Have him keep track of his time and send the bill to Granville for the, the time in the equipment and the sand. So the fire was in Granville, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. But we got a three hundred fifty thousand dollar truck, and we got a sixty thousand dollar truck, and we got fifteen guys there up there volunteering their time. It's a long way to the brook. Ah, uh, you're right. <laughs> and it was seven degrees and wind was blowing, so we were making good ice. Uh, we were being real careful, but we still had some ice. Uh, from what I understand, the state police called all over trying to get somebody to come, and they couldn't get anybody. So, <laughs> or the selectman couldn't. They called the selectman, and the selectman either brushed it to the side or. Did something I told Dan he needs to go talk to Slackman about it because it's a joke. Uh, you can't get people there. But I'm just asking if the town of Rochester could go up there and we could bill them. Well, as Patty said, we probably want to communicate with the town of Granville first and, and 
Let select them board. know, or yeah, the select board. Let them know that there would be um, these bills might be common. And then, well, I mean, you, we probably go there. Yeah, hopefully not again. But <laughs> hopefully not again. Yeah, but right. when you need it, you know, but when you need it, you need it. Yeah. But when you need the, the sand, you do. You need the sand. I mean. I'd hate to think the town of Rochester's so friggin' cheap they couldn't go up there and have four get, guys get run over because there's no sand. Well, they have sand in the river, correct? They have correct, sand but there's no way to load it. Right. No, there's no loader there. Well, there is, but you can use it. No, well, probably. It's not and, and of course, they have contract services that do not live in the town of Correct. Rochester. So, uh, their, their circumstance is a little outside the norm so I think if we present that to them and it'll probably go from fire department to fire department fire department to select board because <laughs> I think we would have to also involve the Granville fire department because you're us you're aiding them correct so there, there's, there's do that we get a bad night I'll, I'll pull a three step out of process. There. but I think I think we might be able to clear a path just to say, if the circumstance arises again, talking about public safety, can, can we be the first responders with sand like you are the first responders for the ambulance? Well, I mean, it'd be the last resort to get them. I mean, yeah. right. Do, does the towns have a mutual aid agreement? I shouldn't say mutual aid, but emergency agreement with the town, surrounding towns, like a disaster? Um, is there some sort of I know there's some. Yeah, much. I mean, what do you do with the fire department? I was going to say, do you send the bills? <coughs> For what? No, 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 we haven't been for eight. But yeah, yeah I send mean, us bills. So doesn't the right. towns have some sort of maybe it's we have state or stuff whatever they yep. share stuff or whatever for emergencies? I don't know how that works. No, no. Uh, they're saying they have they have mutual aid. The fire department, right, right, exactly. Yeah, does that mutual aid mean we send whatever equipment is necessary? Correct. That would be a sand truck. Yeah. If our men need a well, sand correct. truck, emergency, that would be what emergency. Whatever happens to an emergency, you need an emergency. You don't, you don't need a bunch of firefighters on their butts. Yeah. So if the agreement actually says we send the necessary equipment and it's a sand truck, mm -hmm. you send a sand okay. truck. All we have to do is find that path and we'll, we'll go right up through there. Not a problem. I mean, it, no, nobody's going to argue. The only, the only thing is, it's the guy. Sense. The town crew is the only ones getting paid. Everybody out there is not. Right. So you got a, you got a time issue here too. You know you got Correct. You, you know these guys got to get to the station. They got to get the truck. They got to get up there and find out it's too icy. You know by the time you get a hold of Cooter, get somebody down there, get a sand truck loaded, get it up there. Oh, it's, it's going to be a while. It's no different. So who did do you know? the sanding? I, I saw Nobody did. Okay, thank you. I thought so. Honey. Biggest hazard in the winter isn't necessarily the fire, it's the ice. Yeah. But I mean, you know, an emergency is an emergency. Well, I'm just asking. Yeah, I, I, I think we can, all we have to do is find the paperwork path. Yeah. But I think they need to work it out with a contract that they got. They should be able to get it there within a reasonable amount of town. I mean, he's no different than, you know, I was waiting for Green Mountain Power to get there. I mean, they're one of the first calls we make when you have structure fires to them. And they're at least an hour. They'll have a pickup there usually in an hour. Well, it would seem if you presented it to the select board, you know, I mean, you know, if you'll come up with something or at least put it in next year's contract that, you know, that somebody's got to be on call in case of an emergency, you know, if somebody, you know, or they say you got to get an ambulance or something. Reasonable you know, time. Anybody. Because if you're trucking on Maston Hill and water's running out the back of one of your trucks after filling it up, you're only going to make one trip Second before day. you're all done. Yeah. So Grandma's got a lot of hard hard before you come back down. I'm sorry, board, and we're missing stuff up there, so. Right. That's part of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we've got a bump in the road with Granville, and I, I understand that, you know, uh, the fire chief, Daniel, works out of town now. During the day. During the day. Mm. I'll talk to them tomorrow. We Steve have a meeting tomorrow night. Is road commissioner? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of it. Uh, oh, it's only at least for the winter. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
Let me talk to him tomorrow night. Wait a minute, the road commissioner doesn't stay in town during the winter. If I had an emergency, you guys wouldn't kick me in the ass. No. If I had Cooter come up there and spread us a load or Dana. Cooter and Dana, either one of them said they would be more than happy to come. Yeah, I would expect they would, yeah. Yeah. With no problem at all. He said you just. He said it's just you guys got to give him the okay to go. Yeah. yeah that's and I think he was planning on being here tonight until this because he oh. we talked about it today. That's a lot cheaper than a truck over the bank. A lot cheaper. Yeah. Or a bunch of lads. Or, or somebody exactly. could get hurt. Yeah. That's the other thing. Somebody get run over. Yeah. That's, that's the whole thing about emergencies. Is that the more think about it ahead and plan for everything. Yeah, you got to, but each piece we can put into place is, is a, another piece of the puzzle. We just got a backup plan, that's all yeah. we care. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't. So who is, who does the road work for Granville? It's contracted. Griffin now. and Griffin. Okay. No. No, well, it's who are about it? used to be Griffin and Griffin. Yeah, it's it's his, 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 Avery or? Somebody knew this yeah, year. Yeah, Avery. That sounds familiar. He bought out Griffin and Griffin. Yeah. He bought the contract. He was, yeah. Who was their main staff right. person, whatever, right. and he yeah. had a contract. Yeah. Um, At one point, they didn't have anybody, and then this other company took over the Griffin and Griffin mm -hmm. entity, and they were doing it. And they were not um, accessible. No, the company they didn't show up until the next day. No, they didn't make it the day after. Oh, really? <laughs> <coughs> but they have a loader, but it, they keep it locked up. Uh, well, I, yeah, I've got I would imagine they probably take the deal. Yeah. yeah. I, don't I mean, they got to. Yeah, gotta I mean, you don't jump in right someone else's rig without permission. Right. So, yeah. yeah. The yeah. liability issues. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is just a cat key, but you still don't do it. Yeah. I mean, anyone yeah. take on it probably is, you know, one ton load up there. And you're applying the scenario to the situation that we just had. Um, if right. you were lending assistance to Stockbridge, are you looking for that as well? In well, yeah, it and could be if it's up in New Boston, but then you're not going to be Stockbridge as much as it would be Bethel. Bethel. I mean, I'm thinking like... The house right. at the end of that road is on Bethel. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure Bethel's... But Stockbridge, you're going to have, you know, some of those guys from Stockbridge right there, too. So, so I mean, instead of right. just picking on Granville, we should explore what our policy should be when we but, are lending us. Yeah, but you take Stockbridge and Bethel, they got full time town crews. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Yeah. Well, it's Hancock. And Hancock doesn't have one either. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, whether they got a backup plan or. But even Rochester, if you got to call a Sky Hollow right now, would you call Cooter first? Probably would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Well, I'd yeah. probably not first, but well, I'd maybe not call first. when I got there. <laughs> well, it'd be nice to have him go up before the damn truck does. Well. Uh, as early as he could. They're saying I'm pretty good. You maybe call Dave on day when I on the ambulance service. Maybe. I'd come back yeah. now, would be the bad part. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Well, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Bruce, you had some input for when we redo the highlight, highway mileage certificate? Yeah, when, when is that due? <clears throat> this last one, we signed that um, in February, last February, so it's not due um, immediately, but in the next, you know, it's coming up. Well, like uh, GPS to the Class 4 roads, Jones Mountain and the Dur Kinsman, and um, I've got some ideas on the Jones Mountain on some changes that I think ought to be made. And I want to check uh, my mileage against what you have listed for the Dura Kinsman Road. And I'd like, if the snow doesn't get too deep, to do two, two more Class 4 roads and see if my figures jive with what you've got on the highway maps. So I'll be working on that this coming month. So it would give us time enough to update the map before you certify the mileage. That'd be great. Thank you. What are the other two roads you want to work on? I'd like to do Hillside Terrace, check that, and then the road that starts in Bingo and goes out past the sand pit. 
that's actually a class four road. So it's not the Pine Gap Road, it's not the Pine Road, it's the other road that runs parallel to Bingo Brook. It's the old... The old Bingo, Bingo road. road. Yeah. Which is still carried as class four. Yeah. Yep, I get to them if the snow yeah, doesn't get yeah. too deep. All right, great, thank you. And I think that's it. I have a bit of a curiosity that yeah. I'd like to bring up. Um, something that uh, kind of put together during budget meetings. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't closed out the park and ride project because we don't have a shelter for people waiting for it. And the stagecoach was interested in having that become their spot to pick right. up people. <clears throat> um, so there may or may not, we haven't formulated what type of shelter, how many people it should hold, it, what it, will it be made of or anything. Um, at the same time, I, I noticed that um, with our high schoolers um, taking the stagecoach. Um, they're they're waiting in the Skidmark parking lot for the most part. Am I correct? It's actually the Max parking lot is where we wait. Okay. Like where that sign is for the stagecoach stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't find that safe, um, especially when it's dark in the morning like it is for our. There are high schoolers, they're not they're kindergartners, but they're they're waiting on the side of the road. They're congregating, waiting for their rides to go to their high schools. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm thinking of uh, asking the school board if they want to join in on the shelter, and then we would have a designated area for them to wait for their rides or their stagecoach or anybody um, off the main beaten path in a in a more secure area in that parking lot. Joan, what's, where are we at with that um, the money for the shelter? Uh, there's ten thousand dollars in the budget. I've been waiting for B-Trans to renew the contract that we have with them, the grant contract. Uh, for some reason, it's taking a long time. Um, otherwise, I've just been busy with other stuff. So, I so there is some. There was some money. Oh, like, there is money yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. I'd be willing to pursue it to see if we can bring that, because now we see a, yet another need for right. it. Yeah, well, um, uh, it was Greg White at the budget com committee meeting I attended who said, who asked for the name of the guy I talked to at Stagecoach, mm -hmm. and I just sent that to him today. Good. It's Nick D'Agostino. Mm -hmm. um, and either he or I will follow up just to find out where Stagecoach is on that because he was bringing it to a board meeting which happened I think maybe two weeks ago where they were going to talk about I think getting shelters at a variety of places including this one. So uh, maybe what I can do is check with Greg and just make sure someone's in touch with them, find out if they want to move forward as partners on this. Mm -hmm. If not, we can right. just do it ourselves. Um, and I will renew my attempt with VTrans to get the grant renewed. Right, but we can, we can get the strength you know, yeah. if, if, if we're talking about, because it's, 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 it's new that we now have students, our high schoolers are waiting to be transported out of the town. Right. That's, that's new this year. Right. You know, now, I know stagecoach is very interested also in having a shelter because mm -hmm. they are really, you know, they want We've this We've got interest to, all the way around. Let's, yeah. let's go. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. So I plan to go to the next right. school board meeting as well. Yeah. That's it for me. All right. Um, I guess that's it. We're going to pay some bills and finish up. Thank you all for coming out. Drive safe. Thank you for having us. <laughs> <laughs>